Um, my name is Lisa White and I'm a professor of modelling and epidemiology at the Nuffield Department of Medicine, Oxford University. Um, mathematical modelling is a, uh, it's a framework uh, for understanding a particular system. So for example, uh, for infectious diseases, uh, if we understand the way that the disease transmits and we understand the biology and the behaviour of the people um, and how they uh, pass the disease on to each other, then we can uh, translate that understanding into mathematical language and then it becomes a mathematical model. Once it's in that language, we can then use the model to explore what-if scenarios for the future and um, determine whether if we uh, intervened in some way, uh, treating everyone or providing a vaccine, uh, how that would uh, have a, an impact in the future on people's health and also how much it would cost. I believe that mathematical modelling can help us fight, fight tropical illnesses, mainly from a strategic point of view. So for example, if, uh, if there is a particular budget available, to uh, control or fight a tropical disease at the population level, then what mathematical modelling can do is determine the most effective way in which to uh, intervene with that disease, to, uh, to control it, um, and therefore uh, save more lives and um, get buy more health for your money. An example of some research um, that my team and I have been doing recently is to produce a mathematical and economic model for uh, multiple species of malaria for the Asia-Pacific region. And the purpose of this model framework was to explore uh, strategies for elimination of the uh, disease of malaria for the entire region. And um, this uh, is a piece of work that is um, still underway and is about to be published. With our Asia Pacific model, our challenge was to make it spatially explicit, uh, which means that although we were trying to make a model for the entire region, we actually had multiple patches within that region uh, for each country. One patch was a country, but actually, we are able to uh, have a much higher resolution than this data allowing. The next step on from uh, producing this model structure and applying it to the Asia Pacific region is to zoom in. And uh, we are working with the malaria control program in Cambodia to have a much more detailed data set at the national level. And we are able to then use this data set to produce a model that is a multi-patch model, again, a spatially explicit model, but for Cambodia itself, with the patches being provinces within Cambodia. And uh, the purpose of doing this would be purely for the uh, national control program decision makers to take the finished item, the completed model, and run through a series of scenarios that they would like to explore uh, in a simulation environment before they do it for real for their malaria elimination strategy. I think for my field, my particular field of epidemiological modelling, the most important development is the link with mathematical and economic modelling and policy making. And uh, this link has been growing as the field is becoming more and more mature. And um, I believe that uh, the, there's a lot of impact um, to say uh, potential to save lives and um, to uh, maximize the impact of uh, public health interventions by using mathematical models in this way, but only if policy makers are partners with the researchers. I think that my uh, line of research matters because although there are many ways to approach the control uh, of infectious diseases and also to uh, approach the scientific inquiry of tropical disease, what mathematical modelling can offer is a, an evidence-based uh, logical framework for um, thinking about these questions 
and also for approaching the problem in a methodical um, and optimal way. And I also believe that uh, a good mathematical and or economic modeler within a team or within an institution um, will probably uh, save more money than is invested in them because of the cost savings that they can um, achieve through uh, this kind of work. Mathematical modelling, and especially if uh, economic modelling is included as well, provides a bridge between basic science research and policy. So uh, the way that uh, we uh, can work with basic scientists and clinic clinical researchers is um, that when uh, we have results from the lab or uh, from the field, we can place these results into the context of um, the, uh, a potential rollout at population level using a mathematical model and predict the, uh, the, the impact of uh, research. So I would say that um, it's a very useful tool to have for translational uh, research or translating research into policy.